chronic pain is largely due to central sensitization. That's where the neuroanatomy and neurochemistry of your spinal cord and brain changes. Start by imagining that your brain is a fortress in the center of a well-guarded city. And around that fortress, you have multiple walls, each of which has a fortified gate. Now, we need to deliver a message, and the only way is to follow the only road. <laughs> and to get to the fortress, the brain in the center of the city, we have to pass through each gate in order and then eventually get to the brain. But along the way, arr, there do be dragons. There's a lot that can go wrong. And most likely if you have chronic pain, this is a big part of the reason you have chronic pain in the first place. This is part of my pain neuroscience series. Normally this type of information would be reserved entirely for people inside of my one-on-one -on -one programs, but this information is just absolutely too important not to give to everybody in the public. So please take advantage of it. Watch every single video in this series. Today we're on central sensitization, which is where one plus one equals 20. One little signal gets amplified like crazy, and then we have a ton of pain. Now the short version is that if we follow the gate analogy, chronic pain is like keeping the gates open all the time, unfortified, we get bombarded with danger messages, and this is a wiring issue, okay? So think about a house, if the light bulb goes out, there's a lot of potential reasons a light bulb could be out. Everybody gets fixated on the light bulb itself. We assume the light bulb is damaged. That's the metaphorical equivalent of assuming that your pain is due to the disc herniation or degeneration or short leg or a weak core. The obvious stuff, the stuff we can see. But chronic pain is not really a light bulb issue. It's it's a wiring issue, it's an outlet issue, maybe it's a breaker issue, maybe it's even the electrical company. Acute pain is easy to fix because it probably is that the light bulb just went out. And so here's the deal. If you're dealing with chronic pain, you've already tried to metaphorically replace the light bulb. You don't need to go back and try over and over, replace the light bulb, replace the light bulb, right? That's the equivalent of getting hyper fixated on the disc herniation, the weak core, the pelvic tilt, the leg length inequality, the tight psoas, the weak glutes. None of that stuff matters. You already tried to fix that stuff. It didn't work. Stop trying to change the light bulb. It's not a light bulb issue. Chronic pain is a system issue. It's either the wiring, the outlet, the breaker, the electrical company, or possibly a combination of all of these things. Welcome. If you're new here, I'm Dr. Anthony Davis. I empower people with chronic back pain and sciatica to reclaim the active life they deserve to be living with holistic evidence-based rehab. If you ever need one-on-one -on -one help, watch the masterclass, book a call, and we'll see if we can help. This is going to sound weird, but but disc herniations are not a disc herniation issue most of the time, meaning the pain that you're having, if you have a disc herniation, the pain you're having is probably not actually because of the disc herniation. But because so many of you are hyper fixated on the disc herniation, I'm going to show you exactly the neuroanatomy of how a disc herniation can cause pain that is not due to the disc herniation. First, a bit of anatomy. On the back side of your spine, if you feel it in your back, you got these little bony things that stick out, that's the posterior aspect of your spine. On the front side of the spine is where the discs are and they are sandwiched between the vertebral bodies. A disc can herniate, here's a herniation, and then in between the disc and the posterior spine is the spinal canal where the spinal cord lives. Then we have these nerve roots that pop out through these foramen in order to go to the rest of the body. Now I'm zooming in, okay? So here we are, spinal cord, we have that disc herniation, we're just way zoomed in. And I wanna point out that look at this little nerve root, look how much space there is. And this is kind of accurate. There actually is a ton of space. So even though there's a disc herniation, there's still tons of room for that nerve to navigate around the disc herniation. It, it, true compression of a nerve root from a disc herniation is very rare, even if it looks like it's compressed on an MRI. All right, let's make this picture black and white so I can draw on it. So let's say that you have a disc herniation and let's say it's fresh, it's new. Yeah, fine, originally there was a little bit of damage to the tissue. Okay, we had a minor injury and I am calling a disc herniation a minor injury because most people have a disc herniation and most of the time they do not cause any pain. But okay, in this case, we had a little bit of swelling of the outer disc and so there is a message sent 
to the spinal cord, that's a danger message. It travels in through the nerve root, through the dorsal root ganglia, and into the dorsal horn in the spinal cord. Once it gets there, it reaches a gate, a synapse. And when it gets to that gate, that gate is hard to get through, right? We don't want just anybody going through the gate. So it encounters security. And security, in this case, is worse than TSA. It's going to stop you, frisk you, put you through the scanner and the, you know, take a body scan and, you know, probably, you know, do a full pat down the whole nine yards. It's hard to get through security. It's hard to go through a gate. It's hard to trigger a synapse to fire off the next electrical message. But if we do get through the gate, then we trigger a message to go along the next neuron up to the brain. But there's a couple ways that we can lead to hypersensitivity of these nerves. One is that the initial injury occurred with a high stress um, situation, or that there's a lot of stress surrounding the pain in the first place. In either case, this is like what in that danger message is now a giant danger message and it's banging down on that gate saying, hey man, this is a big deal. The other way is that we get repeated irritation over and over and over and over over a long period of time. Either way, whether it's one big stressful message or a bunch of little ones, we're banging on that gate. And this leads to membrane hyperexcitability, which is where the gate, metaphorically, is busted open and anybody can just waltz through, security has completely left the building, so nobody's even guarding the gate, and all of the messages, boom, they're just bombarding, everybody's getting through. And just like we don't want everybody to get through security at the airport, we also don't want indiscriminate messages messages getting through to the brain. Now, when I say security is gone and the gates are wide open, what I really mean is that we have inflammatory neurotransmitters like substance P, CGRP, and glutamate that are neuroinflammatory or excitatory, so they make your nerves a little jumpy. So in a nerve, what we see is that in order to send a message along a nerve, we need to increase the voltage to a certain point, and then boom, a message will be sent. So at rest, when everything is normal and safe, the nerve inside of the cell will be low voltage. But if there is true tissue damage, like stepping on a nail, then we're going to see a bunch of sodium and other things flood into the cell and increase the voltage of the cell. Once we cross a certain threshold of voltage, all of a sudden, boom, a danger signal is going to be sent along that nerve. If we do not reach this threshold voltage, there is no signal sent. So this process is what I actually mean when I'm talking about these gates being open or closed. Now in chronic pain, the cell has high voltage even at rest. And because it's sitting at a high voltage at rest, it only takes a little tiny bit of sodium to flood into the cell in order to send off that danger message. So it is very easy to accidentally trigger the voltage and trigger an electrical signal to the brain. For example, I mean, instead of having to literally, you know, get in a car crash to cause pain or have some major injury to cause pain, just touching the area might be sensitive or just doing some very gentle exercises like a cat cow or a bird dog. The point is non-damaging stimuli trigger false danger messages to the brain. This is like a sunburn. You get a sunburn. Once you have the sunburn, yes, there is some damage, but once you have the damage, the damage is done. And now your body's working on healing it. But in the healing process, you can't take a hot shower because a hot shower hurts like hell. Or even just putting on a t-shirt could really hurt the sunburn even though it's not causing damage. Once again, you already, the damage is done. Yes, you had damage with the sunburn, but putting on a t-shirt, even though with a sunburn, it causes a ton of pain, putting on the t-shirt does not cause more damage. Now, technically, this is called peripheral sensitization, but the neurochemical um, explanation in the physiology is exactly the same as what's happening in central sensitization. It's just in a different location. So in central sensitization, just doing simple exercises like a cat-cow might trigger 
disproportionate levels of pain, even though it is impossible that a cat cow could possibly cause damage. A cat cow cannot cause damage, ever, unless you already had a pre-existing major, major injury, like a fracture or dislocation in your spine. And in the same way, putting on a t-shirt over a sunburn, even though it causes pain, it is not causing more damage. The other thing that happens with central sensitization is delayed flare-ups. So our nerves transmit signals at different speeds and our nerves um, decide to send a signal at different time frames. So we have email, which is really fast. It's instantaneous. So as soon as you do a movement, we have pain. That's more predictable, but a lot of you have unpredictable symptoms. It's more like sending something in the mail. We don't know if it's going to get there tomorrow or the next day or whatever. And so you might do your exercises and you feel fine while you're doing your exercises, but then maybe the next day or the day after, then suddenly you have a flare up and you're like, why it felt fine when I was doing my exercises. Why am I flared up now? This is really important. Structural problems like a disc herniation actually compressing on a nerve will cause pain immediately, consistently, every time you do the same particular movement. So if you're getting delayed flare-ups or unpredictable flare-ups, then that is not a structural issue. It is a physiological issue, not an anatomical issue. Same thing with unpredictable flare-ups, right? They are physiological. They are not structural. So don't worry about the disc herniation, pressing on a nerve, that is not happening unless you have true neuropathic symptoms as I described in an earlier video in this series. In other words, you're getting false alarms. One of the most important things that happens in central sensitization is how ion channels change. I told you, in order to change the voltage of a nerve and send a signal, you have to have sodium cross a membrane. Sodium is an ion, and in central sensitization, we have a dramatic increase in the number of sodium channels, really ion channels, because there's other ions that are crossing the membrane as well. In other words, if we have a danger message and it's coming into the body and it needs to cross a certain gate, well now we have three times as many gates. We have way more gates. And if we have a lot more gates, we have a lot more messages getting through. And this is how in chronic pain, one plus one equals 20. One little signal just gets amplified like crazy. On top of that, the ion channels become leaky. We get leaky ion channels. So if a nerve receptor or synapse is like a gate, well, we could have heavily fortified gates that are difficult to get through. That would lead to less pain or we could have flimsy gates that are easy to just kick open or jump over. It's easy to get over these gates. That leads to hypersensitivity and chronic pain. So this is a picture of a membrane inside of a cell and a channel inside of a cell. This is not what a sodium channel looks like, but cut me some slack. This is what a channel would look like. So we have a ton of sodium outside of the cell, in a normal situation, only a certain amount of sodium will get through at a given time. But in chronic pain, these channels widen out, they become leaky, and we get tons of sodium rushing through the membrane too much, and we get chronic pain. So now not only do we have more gates and more messengers, but each gate is really easy to get through. So we each gate lets in more individual messages. So to go back to our metaphor that the brain is a fortress in the center of a city and we need to get into the city, the heavily fortified city to deliver a message with central sensitization in the uh, spinal cord, what's gonna happen is now the gates are wide open, there's no security, there's no guards, we're building building bridges, we're busting down the gates, we're swimming through the canals to get into the, the fortress in the city, and we're just getting tons and tons of messages. We are bombarding the brain with messages over and over and over again. Now, in a normal healthy system, what would happen is we'd just get this one message, it would go to the brain and it would say, hey, there's a little fire we need to put out, and the brain would say, oh, okay, let's send the fire department, let's put out the fire no big deal. But with chronic pain and central sensitization, your brain is getting bombarded over and over and over with messages. Some of these are not even legit messages because of the hypersensitivity of the nerve, that increased voltage, which makes it really easy to set off a 
false uh, danger message. So your brain is getting bombarded with false danger messages over and over and over and over again. And so the brain says, man, if we're getting this many messages, there must be something really serious going on. So we are going to war, call out the troops, assemble the the army. We're going to send out tanks. We're going to send out our best military weapons and personnel. It's going to war. So next time we're going to be talking about how the brain goes to war, how war, war metaphorically is pain and how the cycle just goes around and around and around in peripheral sensitization and other systemic changes. I'll see you in the next video.